Okay, and then way down here. Alrighty. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a recap of Composing in Multiple Dimensions, Part 48, Scene Cycling. In today's episode, we worked on several ideas. We composed another concept diagram for upcoming presentations. We did a scene recycling test with uh, our poise composition, and we continued working with the fourth scale C244255 eight, which you just heard a little bit of. We have been uh, working hard on some key concepts that are coming up, something called order contingency, which is very demonstrated here in, in our music work, actually, is where you get to depends on where you start from and what order you go. So we have talked often about the idea of cherry picking chords. So one method that we compose is cherry picking from pre-sorted chords in the tonality reference score like this. So here they are. So there, these are the tonic chords, and then we've and then the subdominant and the dominant and so forth. And so with 54 chords, you could theoretically just when we have we go through here and pick pick them out and plop them into a new score. So we call that cherry picking because it's like you're in a cherry orchard and you're looking around with the basket and you're looking for the cherries that are ripe and not rotten and ready to eat and the cher and the ones that are not yet ripe enough to eat. So then cherry picking, another way that we cherry pick is we said, well, let's just take the 16 chords that are greater than two consonants. So, um, and we found those in the last stream and here they are. And if we put them in the, in the order they come in, we could easily count this as a composition. And that's not bad. And we have taken stuff like that and made decent sounding music out of it. So that was, we picked a, we started at a different place. So this is order contingent. What you get is depends on the order. So the way to say that in plain English, it depends on what orchard you're cherry picking in. If you're in a pear orchard, you're not going to get cherries. You're going to get pears and so on and so forth. Um, the other thing we acknowledge today in reflecting is that you know, when you start with something that looks like this and you want to get off the ground and compose, improvisations are the, are the only game in town. I mean, it's all an improvisation. You just make stuff up and get going. And we're going to play our second improvisation in a little bit. So along the way in today's stream, we did a, another concept diagram. You may remember that we were doing this yesterday. Um, so how to think in multiple dimensions. You all have seen this diagram before uh, if you were here a couple of streams ago. Um, this one really intrigues us because this is the idea of what's called intentionality. So Peter knows that Jane believes that Mark thinks that Paula wants Jake to suppose that Amelia intends to do something. And so in our minds, we think about another actor in our life and then we imagine what they're doing interacting with another actor in their life that we know or may not know. And this goes on and on and on very much like looking at this kind of reflection here that we see in our streamer. And it turns out that four levels deep is kind of what most humans are at. And then you can get as deep as six and then it gets hard. But uh, this is another example of thinking in multiple dimensions. How does it relate to our music? Well, it, same idea. If you were composing music or art or nonfiction work, any kind of stuff that we want to share with others, you know, for adulation and or approval and or pay, um, we have to anticipate how will they react to it? Will it catch their interest? Will they uh, pay attention to it? Will they pay for it? You know, whatever your goal is you have to you have to do this this is called intentionality so we made that it's also going to be part of our presentation then we went to our animation and we 
we've been thrashing on on poise which has six six arcs how do we make six scenes or or what and we decided well we'll just go back and forth between what we call the pastel shape and the hollow shape and then we made a nice animation we'll show you a little bit of it here well we show it right now so it starts off like this has a little title actually black then title fade to blue So it fades to the, the first arc in using what we call a pastel shape. Then as we start coming up on the next arc in the composition, and we have to we had to, we had to timestamp all this. Right about in here. So you can see, oh my goodness, it changed. We changed to the other scene, and then we come up to the, again, we really had to timestamp this. And it fades back to pastel shapes. So we thought, oh yeah, scene cycling. But you know what? There's more than two scenes here because look at the playlist. We had to have a blank screen. We have a title on the blue, and we added a blank on the blue, and then we ended up on the title blue. So we ended up having five scenes when all was said and done, which you can see a, a um, you can see across the top up here. Blank, blank, blue, title blue, pastel shapes, and hollow shapes. Um, you're not going to see that one unless we, you know, It's in there somewhere. Yeah, there it is. So what was interesting at getting that point was in the way we used to timestamp was we would make a very rigorous, using our spreadsheet, uh, line diagram. What we did this time is we went into our digital audio workstation, which he already had loaded this all up. And we just went in there, for example, said, where, where do those two kind of separate? And and it turns out that our digital audio workstation will automatically kind of pick a middle point for you, which was pretty right on. So that was 39 seconds. That was 82.5 seconds, which is exactly 43.5 seconds from the last point. And then that was that ended up being how we, there it is, 39 and 43.5. So that was a new technique to use our um, digital audio workstation. So what we're going to do now is show play for you what we've got now in terms of improvisation too. It got shortened a bit because um, uh, we had to make some, we had a few more corrections to make on the chords we were working with and the way they were categorized. But now, now these are the cadences that we've got so far, and we did add a third line called the polyphon. And we want to make sure we can hear uh, all of it. And here we go. And that ends our stream for today. What we liked about um, this is we went through and we kind of had this little trick of playing each line by itself. So we would listen to the backbone and then we would listen to the polyphone and we'd listen to make, does it sound pleasant?
And so um, what that gives us, uh, among other things, for I let we want to let the dust settle from all this work today. But we could we could start um, compressing the backbones and polyphones into uh, tight melody lines and we've done we've done that before in previous scales so thank you for your time attention curiosity interest a shout out to clip has low dpi and miss cleo for stopping by we appreciate it do come back do take care and do keep on streaming <laughs>